Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Nancy Nelson and it's always nice to be here on Democratic Visions. And I'm very excited to speak with this gentleman. He is John Gunyu. John, you are the <laughs> chair of the Three Rivers Park District Board of Commissioners. We in Minnesota appreciate our parks and we know how important they are. I think when we say park systems, most of us have in our memory, I grew up near Minnehaha Park, that you go down and the family has a picnic and you swing on those big swing sets. Uh, my goodness sakes, our park system has become a great deal more than that. We have about 10 million visitors a year, if you can believe it. Isn't that wonderful? And for the last 10 years, it's been growing double digits every year. Just the, uh, the demand is increasing, which is a challenge, of course, to, to keep up with that. Uh, I think one way to look at Three Rivers is that we're a large regional system that's focused on, on uh, natural resource and environmental preservation. So we have 22 parks, but we preserve 27,000 acres of land. And in fact, that's how we were originally uh, formed over 50 years ago was the Hennepin Park Reserve was our name at that time. And so we have all these uh, large holdings of land that will never be uh, developed. It's not just the regional parks, but we have an operating farm, we have a historical village, we have a number of special use facilities in addition to that. And within those parameters, of course, the activities change as the season changes. You bet. Three Rivers also operates cross-country ski areas as well as highland ski and snowboarding area in Bloomington. You know, Highland probably has the second largest amount of visits uh, in the state of Minnesota. On average, we get about 160,000 skier visits uh, per year. Well, we cover 25 acres of skiing area with snow making. The Park District has a lot of different locations for cross-country skiing. Uh, and we also have two facilities that have snow making on the cross-country trails. Highland and Elm Creek will always have consistent snow conditions, whether it snows or not. We have about 70 miles of uh, other trails throughout probably eight other parks, cross-country trails. Uh, but of course the snow nowadays is not as reliable and so we have to help Mother Nature along sometimes. Three Rivers is one of the premier regional park districts in the entire country. And it operates major parks and park reserves in Hennepin County, but you also branch into Carver County and Scott Counties. Three Rivers Parks District has nature centers, nature trails, boat launches, golf courses, picnic and camping areas, horse riding trails, and most of our superb regional bike trail system. What is your relationship with a lot of the state and city parks that I would be used to going to? Well, we work directly with and coordinate with a lot of things. I think the way to think of Three Rivers is we're the, we have the big parks. So, for example, Highland, that's actually a thousand acres there. Wow. Uh, and we have a, what we call an 80-20 rule for these parks so that 80% of those thousand acres will never be used or never developed or used for recreation or education. So it's very much a natural resources based system, but we do then offer these, these programs with, in fact, a good example at Highland is we, we uh, have a very active developmentally disabled program mm -hmm. for, for skiing. In fact, we do that in conjunction with uh, Bloomington and Edina and Richfield and Eden Prairie. Uh, some organizations there. So a big part of our mission is educational. So for example at, at Highland um, we, we have about 300 skiing instructors there that operate out of that and we provide 37,000 lessons a year. Now think about that. I mean we're not in direct competition with with many of the day skiing areas and all that. We're in the business to provide training and education for kids and my, my kids went through that program. In fact, I've tripped over more boot bags, I think, in that old <laughs> chalet. In fact, we're replacing the chalet in a year. So after this season, we'll be tearing it down and building a much more functional one after this year. Uh, one of the things that, that I feel particularly strongly about, Nancy, and I, I know a number of the other commissioners do too, is to try to reach those, uh, those areas and those users that might not uh, have been as big a park users in the past, uh, that might not 
typically visit the parks. And by that I mean uh, children and seniors in particular, and particularly the first tier suburbs. Uh, most of our facilities and programs are offered in the exurban areas because we were about land preservation. That's how we were founded and that's where most of our facilities are located. But what we're starting to do is to enter into more partnerships with those, uh, those local park districts in the first tier suburbs in the Hennepin, Hennepin suburban area, uh, pr primarily through the schools and then also so through some of the senior programs. Uh, just one example, the Richardson Nature Center, which is at Highland, has a, a, a long-standing relationship with the uh, Minnetonka School District, with three of the elementary schools there. And what we do is we have our educators work with the, uh, the teachers there to develop natural resources and environmental curriculum. And then we, we bring some of our fun things and activities into the schools and vice versa. They visit the Nature Center. And we reach probably about 2,600 students a year doing that. One of the things we're doing uh, that we've just started this fall is to try to reach seniors. Because uh, uh, those that are particularly, particularly those that are less mobile. Uh, for example, we have senior housing in uh, many of the areas like Hopkins, Richfield, uh, yes. increasingly so as we, as we age. And we have like... 30 or 40 different programs, things that we can bring into these uh, senior housing or senior centers. What, what do you take into the center? Well, it's everything from raptors, uh, which means an owl, less predatory <laughs> animals. Uh, we bring in farm-related agriculture, historical things into the programs for the seniors to be involved with. We can you know, reach 30 or 40 people at a time. I, I call it the bookmobile with an owl. You'd be surprised. Now, the seniors understand that, but the kids don't understand what I mean don't, when I say don't. bookmobile. They no. don't. The next step with the Lowry Nature Center, which is at Carver Park, is to work with them and the Hopkins School District to do the same thing. It's an after-school program. We have, the, we have the expertise in a lot of these areas. Uh, the the first-tier suburbs have many of the facilities, and so we're trying to marry those two and, and not reinvent the wheel. We're obviously not going to build a thousand-acre park in the first-tier suburbs at this point, uh, but we can do that by working together. I, I think we can do the same thing with the nature centers that ex that, that exist in the communities like in uh, in Richfield as, uh, as well Lake as St. Louis Center. Park. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, it, it's so important that you you span that entire range from the very young to the senior citizen. And then, of course, in the middle, there are so many activities that you provide for families. Our, our mission is about connecting people with nature. I love part of that. It. And we oh. think there's a lot of different ways to do that. You can, you can, in many ways, bring nature to people that might not be as mobile, as well as, as, well as uh, whet their appetite. For yes. example, uh, we brought into Shady Oak Beach at uh, that's a Hopkins Minnetonka uh, run uh, facility our uh, kayaking and our canoeing instructors, and so the kids could see that and get excited. We brought the archery equipment in that they could use, which they don't get in the local recreation programs. So I think by working together, which I think our taxpayers expect us to do, uh, we can actually serve a lot more people. And seventy-five percent of your funding comes from the taxpayer mm -hmm. as it is distributed to you and 25% is donations? Is fees. Is fees, that's is right, fees. and the pyramid. Mm -hmm. But we do have, we actually have a foundation which then provides scholarships to people that uh, might not be able to afford even the, the minor charges that we have. We think it makes sense to allow people, since they pay taxes, to use the parks without having to buy a pass and go in and every time they want to visit one of these large parks and enjoy the natural setting. Uh, but we have what we call a pyramid in which there's layers of the different programs we offer. So the, the base are those uh, free access to all the parks. And then as you go up the pyramid, as you use different services, you pay a, a different percentage of the cost of doing that. Give me an example of how well, that might work. A good example is a lot of the, the kids' programs we have, is there, there is a fee for most of those, but it's very it's very small fee, so it's subsidized. So it, The various it, educational programs that you Educational do programs, very heavily subsidized, so that you don't pay the full cost of that. But as you go up the, up the chain, then you pay a greater percentage until some of, the, some of the areas that we rent out for weddings, things like that, we actually make money on that we can use then to subsidize other programs. 
A little bit ago, you mentioned trails and biking trails. I want to know about all the trails. There's a lot, right? There are a lot. In fact, we have about 300 miles of trails. Uh, about 120 miles of those are regional trails, which I think the best way to think about that is it's almost like the highway system. Uh, Three Rivers provides regional trails, which are like the major highways. Local communities provide uh, kind of the city streets that tie into the to the major highways. We have about four million people a year that use our, our trails, very heavily bicycle. So about three-fourths of the usage is, is bikers. The uh, Hopkins Depot, if you're familiar with that on Excelsior, yes. is kind of the hub of the trail system in the southern, uh, southern part of the county. Uh, we have, let's see, four and about to be five major regional trails connecting in there. Cedar Lake Trail that runs into uh, Minneapolis, we have about half a million people a year on that. Over one-fourth, close to 30 percent, are now commuters. So it's not just recreational riders. These are people going places to work and uh, shopping and other areas. That's exciting because you don't hear about that very much, that people are using the bike trails that we have put together within the system to go to and from work so they're not putting fossil fuels into our air. Increasingly That's so. That's exciting. In fact, with, uh, with the Southwest LRT, which I know this program has uh, dealt a great deal with, yes. is uh, we expect that to expand considerably because people will be using that to get to the station stops. And so we're heavily involved in that planning to make sure that we have safe overpasses and safe access to the stations. One way to think about the relationship with the local communities in Three Rivers is there are uh, communities that tie into their trail system, into our trail system. We're on Three Rivers uh, Trail right here, the Lake Minnetonka LRT Trail, that it's the Baker Road intersection. And it was pretty dangerous before, so working with the city, we uh, realigned the interchange, especially with the new city park here, because a lot of people are going through this interchange. We moved the trail over about 30 feet so it lines up with the, the traffic light and makes a much safer crossing. Safety is a big issue with our trails, especially as we go through the more urban areas. Three Rivers has been uh, very aggressive at developing regional trails. We have about half of the regional trails in the entire metro area are managed by, by Three Rivers. One of the largest trails that we're about to start construction, actually two, the inner city trail, it's along the eastern border of Richfield and it will connect the new Nine Mile Creek Trail that runs oh through southern Richfield with the Grand Rounds in, in, in Minneapolis. The Nine Mile Creek Trail will be one of our largest and probably more expensive trails that will be built through the city of Edina. It will connect what's already con constructed in uh, Richfield up to this hub in Hopkins near the, near the depot. So this will allow a loop to be constructed. The construction will take place in 2015 and 16. So we have to do three uh, either overpasses or underpass over Highway 100, uh, 62, and 169. So this will be a, a jewel. It'll run along Nine Mile Creek, all on public land. It'll be boardwalks. It'll be, uh, it'll be a beautiful, beautiful trail when it's finished. John, never again will I just say I'm going to the park. <laughs> this is absolutely extraordinary. What an important, special gift to the people of Minnesota. Thank you. The work you do is important. Thank you, Thanks, John Gunyu. Democratic Visions is handcrafted by volunteers through DFL Senate District 48, Eden Prairie, and Minnetonka. Sharon Boreen, Chair. A big part of what we do is education. So many of the programs we have are walks and uh, where we, we actually expose kids and families to the, to the outdoors, not just for exercise, but also to learn something. Um, as one of the 10 million people who enjoys at least one of your parks every year, I'd like to say thank you for the wonderful job you do. I have a very personal association with Wood Lake Nature Center. Oh, wonderful Which is Center. so fabulous because it is a park in the middle of the city. 
Mm -hmm. and, and with all the walking trails, uh, my personal connection came that when my husband, Bill Carlson, passed away, they asked if they could create a memorial waterfall garden oh, for, Bill, I didn't for Billy. That. And so the first thing that happens when you walk in is there's the big garden and the waterfall and a big rock that says Bill Carlson Memorial Waterfall Garden. You can imagine loving the park as much as I already do. My husband and I were original fundraisers going back to Les Blacklock. How fabulous it is to be able to go and see something like that in, I, in his honor. I actually represent Richfield in my district that I was elected from, and so and, and I'm familiar with the center. I didn't realize though. And you the, know Karen the Schrag, connection. the wonderful director oh, there. Oh yeah. You know, I think it's nice to have a. Uh, a personal connection. In fact, oh. I, uh, I showed Jeff the uh, tree that we planted when my grandson was born a uh, year and a half ago in his, in his honor in a, in a public park, which we thought was appropriate. This park has always been very special to me. In fact, when my first grandson was born a year and a half ago, we planted that tree over there that we refer to as Max's tree. In fact, we bring him out every month and take a, a picture of him and the tree to see how they've both grown. I guess we'll do that until he gets too old that he refuses to come anymore. Well, this is the Mills Park. It's uh, Minnetonka's newest park that actually uh, happened on, on my watch here when I was city manager. Waterfall, it goes down to the bottom and then the water goes back up to the top. And there is, there is a lot of hope that all the animals will come here and use the water and nurture themselves. And, and so before I ask you what else is going on, I want to tell you thank you very much, Jeff. What you do matters so much. You're welcome. This goes in my video Christmas gift to my family. Oh, aren't you? <laughs>